Welcome back to Just Blazer, and today we will get into how to hack a Blazer app, specifically a Wasa app that has this particular security flaw. In my opinion, it's a big, big flaw. But before we get into that, I want to say thank you to Ricardo Josu, Ricardo Josu, because he's the one that actually found, or not found this flaw, but like he made a video about it. And I do encourage you to please give him some love, give him some subscribers. He has a lot of good uh, videos here, not just on Blazer. So the only thing I will say is that if you don't know Spanish, uh, here, so on this one, basically everything here is in Spanish, it seems. Uh, but this is where I got the video from here, hacking Blaze Web Assembly. And that's what we're going to do today, except uh, we'll have an updated version of Postman and then other tips and tricks I could give you. So that's why it's going to be very familiar. Anyways, let's get on with the video. So I do not encourage people to do this on actual Blazor website. So instead, we'll be building our own. This is going to be a WASM application with the ASP.NET in the background. So we're going to choose the web, Blazor WebAssembly app, host it on a uh, tool here. And I don't next. And I will have and make sure to click the ASP.NET core hosted as I was trying to say, because we're going to need the whole suite ready to go just so this runs. How you doing, huh? Everything's been good over there, wherever you are, watching me, hacking a Blazor app. But don't worry, I actually have some proof for you that I may or may not be able to show, depending of this problem existing in other applications that run on Blazor today in production. But before that, just know that we have our Blazor app ready to go. Basically, you're not going to make too many changes here. Um, I just want to check on a few things. This is our weather forecast class in the shared uh, project. So I want to run it just in case, you know, make sure this all works out. This is the payload issue that uh, I keep describing about when it comes to making these WASM maps. It takes a while for it to load. But once it's there, things are pretty quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to hack this application specifically. And you can do this with any Blazor app basically that does not have the security measures that you will need to protect it. And I will show you what they are. And it's pretty easy. You don't really have to do that much code. And I'll show you how to get all the tools and whatnot. Bef um, but before that, we need a way of proving that this is a problem. In order for me to do that, I'm going to give you a scenario. First, we're going to make a class within the Blazor app shared project. So we're just going to add a new item. And we're going to call this the connection string. Now, if you don't know what this is, basically, in this particular class, we're going to add uh, what would be the connection string to, let's say, a database. Maybe you have a key here or something for an Azure um, cloud service or whatever. Something that you don't want it to be visible to the world. So that's why we're not going to put it here, because this will show up as a JavaScript, uh, as a JSON object. If you look at it through the console, which is what we're going to do later, but we're going to put it as its own class as you would anything else. So I'm just going to call it connection. Connection string E or something. I don't know. Uh, oh, I didn't even put the string in there. We'll have it get set and then we'll give it like you call it whatever you want, just just a blazer. It's, you know, just something obvious. So now you have a class that technically you're not really using uh, to present to any of the other tiers here. You're not going to pass this along to the server or anything like that. What is going to get passed along is going to be this class, and you'll see it uh, very, br very briefly uh, what I'm talking about. But I believe that we've done everything we can. So what we're going to see when we run this, uh, I'm going to show you what the, it looks like in the console now. I just wanted to get this set up beforehand so that we have something to look at once we get to the actual you know, portion where we hack this application. So what I'm describing, you, you need to do is go to the inspector. And then go to where it says network. And if there's nothing here, just do a preserve log and refresh it so that we see everything that it grabs. So here, what I'm looking for are the DLLs because the DLLs you can still see and you can decompile these DLLs. 
So you'll see what I mean when I actually go do this. And it's very easy to do. In fact, Microsoft provides a uh, decompressor for you if you want. So what I am looking for are those DLLs, but looks like I can't find them, but don't worry, they are there, but they just, uh, I'll show you how to make them show up. But before I do, I'm gonna go to the fetch data and show you what I was saying before about this JSON file, was this weather forecast. You see how all this data is there? You can see everything that's coming back. That's fine because you expect this to be public. You expect this to actually come back to the, um, come back up, bubble up from the, uh, uh, from the server to the client side. So this is all fine, which is why I didn't put the connection string there. Um, in his example, he does that, but the, but that's not the most important part. This is just me covering some bases. However, how am I going to get to these DLLs? What kind of uh, vulnerability am I talking about? Well, in, if you run into a situation where you don't see the DLLs inside of this Blazor Wasm uh, hosted app, what you should do is go to application, go to where it says cache storage, and you're going to see something called Blazor resource here. You're going to delete this and go back to the network that for now, and then refresh. So now we get all the DLLs that is a part of this, uh, this package here, a part of this, pro um, part of our little product that we're going to create. So what I'm going to look for is the Blazor shared packages. That's what I want. I want to show off that I could actually see all your data or whatever you're passing in to the, um, the, uh, the shared project, because we have a class there that we're going to look at. So I'm just going to find that real quick. Here it is. There it is. So this is what you see. This is all compiled, right? So what we're going to do here now for the next step, you're going to need something called postman. I have my postman ready to go. Um, just download it and then you should be good to go with this. Just go to the collections and then make sure that you have the get set up. Basically just an empty uh, get call. But I'll get into that, don't worry. So when we go here, I want you to right click on this Blazor app to share.dll and we're gonna copy the link address. So we'll go back to Postman. We're gonna paste that in there. So the reason why I say is because uh, if you have this on post or something, it's not gonna work. You want to get what this DLL is. So instead of pressing send, you're going to go to the arrow, send and download. It's going to open up, a, should open up a window where you download it. I just send that. There we go. So if you get that little uh, warning there, don't worry about it. Just, um, just say, forget it. And make sure you save this as a .dll file. A .dll file, well, save it as response and that should be good. So now you have a copy of the DLL compiled. This is where I saved it. This is what we have here. And make sure that it has data here. If it doesn't have data, again, it's not going to work. But now that you have the DLL, we're going to decompile it. And thankfully, Microsoft has made that process very, very easy because it supplies its own disassembler here for DLLs. So all you got to do is to open this assembler. The way you do that is by going to the developer command prompt for your Visual, 20, uh, Visual Studio 2022. There are other ways to open this, but this is like the easiest way. I just go to the start menu, put up the name here, and then you'll get an option to get this. And then in here, you should see that there, uh, the command uh, ILDASM, I don't know if you can actually see this very well, but hopefully I'll zoom in, you can see it. And once you enter the ILDASM command, you'll have this little thing pop up. And here is where we're gonna do the decompilation. So you, all you gotta do is get your response file. That's the one we just bid right now. And now we could see what it has decompiled. So what I care about now is the connection string because that one's the string I did not try to expose. So this, I, I just know that that's where you're gonna find the information. And it's right here. My connection string that was found there 
just Blazor connection. So basically, if you have a Blazor WASA map and you didn't do anything to obfuscate this information, uh, it will show up like this. And anyone with, you know, anyone can download this uh, tool or have this tool downloaded because it comes with Visual Studio, it can just run it and then basically take any information that you might have there. Heaven forbid they are your private keys or something that you put in your project uh, or doing something with that um, and put it on GitHub or whatever. So, and if you're wondering if this strategy works on other Blazor Wasm hosted um, uh, websites, web applications online, it does. I've tried it out. I'm not going to show you that because I don't want to get in trouble. But just take my word for it that if even if, uh, you know, there are some well-known Blazor sites out there and I don't encourage you to do this legal thing, please don't do it. Just do it on your own thing. To, uh, just do it on your own, um, on your own computer, on your own stuff. Don't do it on anyone else's. But you could do it um, basically on anyone who has not gone through the obfuscation process on their Blazor websites. So... That is what you will need to do to protect this. And I'll get into that a little later. But in this case, I just wanted to show you that this really big vulnerability that Blazor Wasm hosted apps have. And if you don't go through the extra steps, you might get stuck with this. And anyone, I didn't even have to do much. I just, uh, I didn't even have to type much, I think. The only thing I typed this entire time was um, was this little command here. Everything else, I just copied, uh, paste, and clicked it here and there. And these are tools that are not like, you know, on the dark web or whatever. These are these are common developer tools that you will use anywhere that are, you know, th that you know are safe to use. And one of the tools Microsoft gives you. So this is a, a pretty well-known thing. And I hope that if you did not know about the weakness of Wasm, well, here it is. Again, I'd like to thank uh, Josu once again. Um, I don't have his site here, but I'll have it. I'll have it in the description below. And if you want to give him some love, give him some love. Just know that everything's in Spanish. So, yeah, I'm just letting you know. But that is the vulnerability that we have here. And in the next video, I'm going to go into how we can uh, secure ourselves from this specific uh, attack, basically. Because, sure, you can code the best you can. You can follow all the security measures within your project. But if your DLLs are exposed in this way, then, you know, what, what good was it all for? Um, I think that's it. This was pretty simple. And I think I proved my point. Like, it doesn't matter which DLL I get here either. Like, I could get any of these DLLs, the ones that you worked on or whatever. It makes no difference. I'm going to grab them, decompile them, and I'll see what they got. And that's really it for this video. Hope you understand that there are some copyrights using Wasm. Yes, I love Wasm too. I love the, the fact that it's uh, a little bit, you know, uh, it can serve more people than Blazor Server and has its own, um, you know, has its own pros versus a uh, Blazor server. But this is one of the big cons it has. And if you don't understand that this is a major con, then you can't solve it. And then you might expose yourself to some security leak or whatever. Anyways, we'll get into that in a different video. This time, it was just pretty simple. I think I have proven that this is a problem. And yes, this is a problem with a lot of Blazor Wasm sites that are not obfuscated. Anyways, that's all there is for now. Peace out.